Welcome back to the channel, Dem members. I teased it a little while ago in the unboxing. We are finally getting around to a full review of my Ruger Mark IV standard. As far as 22 long rifle pistols go, the Ruger Mark IV may be the most iconic. It was first developed in 1949, and despite what a lot of people may think, including myself at first, the Mark IV was not based on the German Luger. You know, the iconic World War II gun. While there are some elements of the Mark IV that do kind of harken to the German Luger, especially right here in front of the trigger guard. And honestly, I personally think the, the pistol grip angle is a little more of the German Luger. The Ruger Mark IV was actually developed using elements from the Japanese Nambu. That's just a little bit of fun trivia about this firearm. Now, anybody that's familiar with the Ruger Mark IV series knows that there are a lot of different models. It's not just this one. They have a whole plethora of different slight variations on it, but they're all based on the same idea that is the Mark IV standard. As is standard with all of my gun review videos for the safety Karens out there, clear magazine, MD chamber. We good? Not gonna get any more comments about, there could still be a round in there. Shameful. Before I continue, I wanna do a full disclosure portion of this video. I have no relationship with Ruger. They don't know who I am. I am not being compensated outside of views that I get on this video. I am not being sponsored. This gun was bought and paid for out of my own account. And at least where I live, the standard costs between $500 and $550. Your results may vary depending on where you live. I am doing a completely unbiased review of this gun so you, the viewer, can have a more objective perspective on this gun in case you are looking to purchase what, in my opinion, is a very fun little 22 long rifle pistol. I guess that's a spoiler alert, isn't it? So to start, let's just do a quick rundown of the Mark IV standard. The standard is the most simplistic of all the Mark IVs. This is the variant that has the four and three quarters barrel. And as you can see, as opposed to the target or the 2245 or the tactical, it is a tapered barrel. I wanna make this absolutely clear at the very beginning of this video. I bought the Mark IV standard not because it was the best equipped or had the most features because it isn't. It is the most simplistic of all of the Mark IV pistols. That's why I got it. I wanted a simple semi-automatic plinking pistol and I personally love the taper barrel. I love the angle of the pistol grip. I just love the overall simplicity of the standard Mark IV. In the hand, the Mark IV standard feels fantastic. I do like the more extreme grip on the Mark IV. Again, I wouldn't want this for an everyday carry gun, let alone the 22 long rifle caliber, but it is a very comfortable gun to hold and shoot. That said, you might be thrown off a little bit by the heft of this gun. It's about one and three quarter pounds, which is only slightly less weight than my Glock 45. So this gun is hefty for what it is. As I mentioned before, this model has the four and three quarters inch tapered barrel. The twist rate is one to 16. The Stock front and rear sights are fixed. They cannot be adjusted without doing some machining, and we'll get into that in a minute. However, if you can see here, there are points on the receiver where you can mount a rail system, so you could add an aftermarket optic. The gun's capacity is a 10 plus one, so the magazine holds 10 rounds. You can have one in the chamber, obviously. When you hit the magazine release button here, it just shoots it out. It's spring-loaded. I'm not used to safeties on a handgun. The Mark IV models come with an ambidextrous safety. So the safety is on the right side, but it's also on the left side. In the box or in the case in which the gun comes, there is a washer that 
you can remove the right hand safety so it's not ambidextrous. This is where you really start to see how this pulls from the Nambu rather than the Luger. To charge the Mark IV, you just pull straight back on the bolt and release. This is a really good gun to train somebody on how to properly charge a handgun. I know a lot of people that when you charge a gun, you tend to ride it forward. If you ride the bolt back forward, you are going to get some nasty little pinches, a nasty little snake bite. Gosh, that really does get you. So I think the Mark IV is excellent to teach you that when you charge a pistol, you pull back and just let go. Don't ride the bolt, don't ride the slide back forward after you charge it. That'll cause malfunctions and it'll get you bit. And that leads to how this gun operates. There is no slide to reciprocate. The barrel does not move. The receiver does not move. Everything is stationary except for the reciprocating bolt. It makes it durable and very reliable, especially for a 22 long rifle. Now with the magazine not in the gun, you cannot pull the trigger. It will not fire. We'll prove that it's charged there. We'll turn off the safety and it will not pull. Now just to show, once we put the magazine in, it will. That's a pretty neat little safety feature, I think. Speaking of the Mark IV trigger, I really actually like it for what it is. The trigger on the Mark IV for a pistol is pretty solid. It's a two-stage trigger, so there's a lot of loose take up right there. You hit a very solid wall, and then just pull through. I should confirm this, but that's Seven, seven and a half pound pull. I'm gonna have to look that up. Honestly, the trigger is pretty nice. I don't think I would change this. I don't know if there are any aftermarket parts. Moving back to the left side, you have the bolt release because again, it's not a slide. So locks back, just the tab, just like many other guns, just push down and drops the bolt forward. I have called the teardown process the Mark IV's party piece. And the people that I show are just kind of like, are you kidding me, that's it? First, you have to make sure the gun is on safe. All you do is you push the button on the back of the frame here, and then the barrel and receiver rotate forward and come off the frame. And then the bolt just slides out the back. That is, a Mark IV stripped. Reassembly is just the process in reverse. You hook the receiver onto the frame and you lock it back down. I love how simple it breaks down and how easy it is to clean the Mark IV. I have nothing else to say. I love how the Mark IV tears down. As of the recording of this video, I have 400 rounds through this gun. Of those 400 rounds, I've had two malfunctions, which when it comes to 22 long rifle is incredible. And to be completely fair to the Mark IV, those two malfunctions were A, subsonic rounds, and B, the gun was not lubricated at all. I was shooting this thing dry. When I got to the range and I had the second jam, I realized what was going on and I broke it down, sprayed a little bit of CLP in it and I haven't had another malfunction since. It is so much fun to shoot. Sometimes it's fun to just take something that shoots very inexpensive ammo and just plink the crap out of steel. And again, that is exactly why I bought this firearm. That brings me to my one mini gripe, and I brought this up earlier. Mine, the sights aren't quite on target. We got one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. It shoots directly left of where I aim. 
It's not that much, but it is enough to be noticeable. Again, as a plinking round, especially shooting steel at closer range, it's not that big of a deal. But if you're going for something that's more precise, even from a 22 long rifle, I have seen that the, the fixed irons on these can be a little bit off. And it seems that they go left more than they go any other direction. I have seen that there are some YouTube videos out there that show how you can machine it out and modify these sights to make them accurate. But at the end of the day, at least for me, it's not that big of a deal. At the end of the day, I really like this gun and I think it is worth the 500 to $550 you pay for it. It is, at least in my opinion, one of the best, if not the best 22 caliber pistols on the market. It is simple, it is easy to clean, it is durable, and it is reliable. I highly recommend the Mark IV line of pistols. Doesn't have to be the standard. You can go with one of the myriad of other models of the Mark IV and you will be very happy with it. I almost guarantee it, unless you just hate 22 long rifle, in which case, thank you for just watching this for my face. That's gonna do it for this video, everybody. I hope you enjoyed it. If you did, please consider hitting the like button. Sound off in the comment section if you have a Mark IV or if you have the Mark IV standard. Consider subscribing to the channel and hitting the bell icon for notifications on future content. As always, don't take life too seriously and make it a great day.